Since the launch of Murder at Castle Nathria, Enrage Warrior has struggled to find its footing. What was once an exciting archetype has struggled in mediocrity. But the Hearthstone community has not given up on the archetype. After the card buffs, people like Groves HS have continued to experiment and finally landed on a list that they think is competitive. But just how good is that list? Uncorrupt here. We're going to take a look at the list, try to find out how good it is. Against Druid, uh, definitely one of the power classes in the current meta. We're going to see how we can do against this with Enrage Warrior. Pretty standard mulligan here. You're just looking for uh, Warsong Envoy. You're looking for Anima Extractor, and you're looking for the weapon. Uh, also, you could potentially keep Rakara in certain situations. Uh, pretty straightforward here. We just play the Warsong Envoy. Pass it over to our opponent. Likely next turn, we're just going to play the Anima Extractor, start trying to buff some of the minions that we have in our hand. And uh, hand looking pretty good here. We're just going to curve out with the minions that we have, which is good. Oh, uh, one other note, also in the mulligan, we would keep the location Sanguine Depths. And we're just going to stick to our plan here. And uh, already looking... Pretty good. Druid was able to ramp nice and early. Uh, we see Theotar. Um, likely... Nothing here is really going to break us. Rakara is probably the best thing they could take, but we can certainly win without our hero card. And uh, we actually do lose Rakara, unfortunately. Um, they gave us the Rusher. Uh, we can make the trade, and that'll buff a card in our hand. And then we just need to spend the rest of our mana here, so... Definitely going to make this trade. And the buff landed on the Acolyte of Pain, so we could play the Acolyte. We could play Trog. Probably want to hang on to the Crazed Wretch. I think we're just going to coin out the Acolyte of Pain here. It got a buff, it puts two power on the board, and we have the potential to be able to draw some cards. Of course, we're going to get in our face damage before we pass back our turn. But uh, things going pretty good here. We're developing a board. Our opponent is uh, mostly AFK, so you love to see that. And that's interesting. They're actually going to give us an extra buff. Okay, so it looks like they're setting up the trade here. They're going to use the Renathal to be able to kill off the Anima Extractor. And at this point, I think we just want to go as wide as possible. Be able to draw a card with the Crooked Cook. Assuming we shove all damage face. I really don't think it's worth the trade for the Renathal here. We just want to get in the face damage. We're really more of, a, of an aggro deck. And I uh, just want to prioritize face damage. So we're going to foul them up here. Send everything face. Pass it back to our opponent. And we're going to let them make the trade. Let me see the Carpenter come down. So we're pretty fortunate our opponent doesn't necessarily have the best draw here. They haven't hit Guff. They have been able to hit Ramp, though. Unfortunately, on our side, we haven't hit any of our Enrage effects, so hoping to top deck maybe like a Sanguine Depths or a Cruel Taskmaster just to be able to get some additional buffs. Rakar is a nice little top deck for us. That'll allow us to buff our board, which is, you know, going to be pretty strong here. And I think we may actually just want to spend our mana and play the Wretch. That seems pretty good. We just want to get stuff on the board. And everything else... Everything else... Yeah, we'll make the trade and go face here. It makes sense to make the trade just because we're able to clear the board, it protects our minions, and uh, we're also gaining buffs on these minions. We see the Rakara come down, and we lose our minion Rakara, so pretty good for our opponent, but still a weak play overall. The Druid's still struggling, and uh, we're still looking for our Enrage effects here as well. Could play the Vol'jin, but I think I want to save it just in case there is a Miracle Growth. It would be nice to be able to put that big taunt back into our opponent's hand. Um, just to be able to get it out of the way. So we'll spend mana the best we can. We're going to play our two two drops here, I think. And likely just armor up. Send everything face. Foul them up. And pass turn back to our opponent. The so thing's still going pretty good here. A little bit nervous about something like a scale of Anixia coming out to uh, clean up a lot of our board. Actually, our opponent's just going to ramp here. 
Unfortunately, we have a lot of two health minions. That is going to allow our opponent to be able to heal here. And the silence coming down. So that's a, a pretty good play from our opponent. It really limits the damage on our board. Still no axe to be able to buff our damage minions. And still no enrage effects. Probably don't want to put the starfish back in our opponent's hand here. Could just play Decimator Olgra. Um, the question is whether or not... We want to bump into the starfish. But we're definitely... We're just going to get the Olgra down here. And unfortunately, I played a little bit too fast. I didn't think about my turn all the way. This was a misplay. I should have actually bumped into the starfish, I think. With uh, the Crooked Cook and the Acolyte of Pain. Simply because now my opponent is going to have two health minions that they can honor kill and gain armor. So... Essentially, I've just made the game significantly harder on myself to be able to find the damage to be able to kill him. So, I do think that was a misplay. Something to keep in mind. But, uh, how much experience do you really have playing against Rakara in this matchup? Unfortunate, but a definite uh, learning there for me. Maybe for you as well. Good news is we do have Grom in hand. So, that's going to give us a powerful finisher. We just have to draw some kind of an Enrage effect to be able to get the extra damage on the Grom from the Enrage. He's a 510, so that means we'll be able to uh, generate an 11 attack minion, plus whatever the enrage effect might be. We could use uh, slam, it would just be straight 11. Location, of course, would be an additional 2 damage, as would Taskmaster. We'll make the best play we can here, uh, limited on board space, so we just drop down the Acolyte of Pain, hoping to be able to draw at least one card, and uh, maybe we can draw into something that's going to be able to buff our Grom. And as expected, our opponent using these two health minions to be able to heal. Acolyte bites the dust. Shrubbagazer is actually pretty good for him. Our board likely in danger now. Most of the time when the druid makes a play like this, they're going to be able to play a lot of nature spells. And get the 3-3 rushers that could potentially kill us. So the question is, what do we do? I think we play Crooked Cook here. And more song Envoy, so... This is going to give us the widest board that we possibly can with the most potential power. Then we can send everything face and so we'll be able to draw an extra card here off of the Crooked Cook, which is certainly going to be good. And finally, we pick up an Activator for Grom. So we'll be able to slam Grom and that's going to give us an 11 attack minion. Eventually allowing us to end the game. Our opponent, though, seemingly just not a lot of nature spells in hand. I was expecting a lot more 3-3s three and a lot more damage coming down on the board. Is able to gain some health, though. But... Oh, wow. Also out of mana. This is just going to be a kill right here. And the Taskmaster for a little bit of extra damage. You can see the deck here doing pretty good, at least in this Druid matchup. Probably a below average draw for us, but also a below average draw for our opponent. If you're interested in more content from me, be sure and check out this hand-selected video just for you. I'm Uncorrupt. Thank you for watching.